Uh, up next is Team IC Census from England. Round of applause, please. So um, I'm Kiva, this is David, we're representing Imperial College um, and the IC Census team. So we're going to go through the translational pitch. Okay. So cardiovascular disease is one of the, the most, causes the most deaths worldwide and it's associated with a high in-hospital mortality rate. One of the main reasons for this is because of misdiagnosis, as many of the symptoms are non-specific to heart failure. Um, so we need to improve our capacity to diagnose early to treat the disease, um, to prevent the disease, which leads to um, better patient prospects. So NT, pro BMP, is, is elevated in heart failure patients, as I'm sure you're well aware. Um, and it also is associated, it's, uh, elevated, it's a risk factor for heart failure. So in our device, we wanted to be able to not only um, de detect heart failure, but also in detect the increased risks of heart failure. So for, the, um, for this, we produced a, a device that can detect elevator, that, that can detect the levels of NT pro BMP. And one of the main benefits of our device is that it's very small, it's cheap, it's portable. So it's made of PLA plastic, which is a very um, cheap product. Um, and it's also very straightforward to use. So the only thing that needs to be swapped between samples is filter paper, which is readily available and of low cost. So not only can our device be used in GPs and in hospitals, it can also be used in rural areas. So it can be, um, yeah, so we, we can not only help those that have readily available access to healthcare, but um, many people throughout the world, as this heart failure is a massive problem. Thank you. So even though, sorry, even though it's relatively cheap to manufacture in the, in the current prototype we have, we are also aware of some of the limitations we have. The first one is that in order to work, uh, the device needs blood plasma instead of just whole blood. So this could make it relatively difficult to make a real prototype where the final customers, which are going to be the patients, can use them at home, as for example, people with diabetes make it right now. So if we would actually want to implement this in a real approach, we could need a pre-stage where the blood can be separated between the red blood cells and the plasma. And then this plasma can be actually taken to the, to the sensor and get the pro BNP measures from that. The second one, as my colleague has mentioned, is that we need to extract one of the membranes and that's the readout where we take actually the image and the concentration values and that's something that is user manual. So if we want to create something that is fully automatic, we actually need to have another chamber. So once the whole binding of the antibodies has taken place, we can just take that membrane automatically and take the image out of that. And finally, and but not less important, uh, the actual data that we get from the image, which is a concentration value, right now we are just running a code through our computer, but in this case should be some kind of Arduino that automatically runs and take that concentration value and send that to a data center or to another laptop, maybe to the doctor's laptop, where they can actually take this into account. So we basically believe that uh, it's quite relatively easy to get a lot of data from these sensors. And as my colleague also mentioned, this can be implemented in rural areas or with people who might not be able to go to the hospital that often. So with such a huge amount of data, what we think we can do is uh, also taking uh, advantage of the current machine learning algorithms is to create a predictive algorithm where the data that we are measuring has an actual meaning that can be sent to the doctor and the doctor with this number can actually say, okay, this person is also obese, this person also has a mother who has had an infarction, he is in a risk factor and then can actually assess better if this person needs a further medical action or if this person is just okay staying at home or if we should bring him to the clinic. And I think this is something very important and it, you need a device that it's relatively easy to get the concentrations value from. 
Also, we believe that as the interaction with the human body will be minimal because it's only taking a blood droplet from your finger. So this is something that has been commercialized quite often in diabetic uh, people. Uh, we believe that the, all the uh, legislation and all the technical file that you would need to submit to the European Union should be relatively straightforward and we could hence have the commercialization of this product in a relatively easy way. So that's pretty much it. So thank you for your attention. And if you have any questions, we'll be happy to answer. Thank you so much. Uh, yeah, so the current prototype that we have right now. Oh, yeah, so the question, sorry. So the question basically is uh, basically how much could it cost in terms of the cartridge, in terms of the membranes, in terms of all the electronic equipment uh, that the whole figure would be. Right now, the prototype that we have right now, which is with an independent laptop that runs the code, is less than one pound. So basically it's relatively cheap just because the material is 3D printed. So I'm not taking into consideration the price of the 3D printer because that's something that you could just use as many times as possible. If you want to include a separate chamber where the membrane pulls out, takes the picture and gets the Arduino where you analyze everything and sends the, the data to a data center or to the clinic, that could oscillate between seven and nine pounds depending on how fast you want your Arduino to read the data and how good the connection that you want to have but among the range of, of price. For, for a single device, of course. Okay. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you very much for the presentation. I see census.